All right, welcome back everybody. I believe we're up to uh, part 36 of the Blue Nose build. And yes, I have started making sales. <laughs> uh, I, and I don't want to turn this into a how-to sewing video, but I'm going to show you a, a few little problems I ran into. And, uh, you know, like I've said, I, I had to take a crash course on sewing. And I've said this before, but one of the nicest things about YouTube is, you know, if you want to learn sewing, you just get on there and you find a couple hundred thousand sites on how to sew. But, you know, who's got time to sit through that many videos? And what I did watch, in particular on the hem making, uh, they didn't show a couple problems I ran into. So I, I have got one sale, my first attempt at one of the jib sales done. Uh, it, it, it will not be used on the ship because I believe I can do it better. But it came out halfway decent. Um, but I'll tell you what, it, th there's a reason why guys don't sew. You know, <laughs> they leave that up to women. That, that's a chore in itself, you know. And I gotta hand it to all the women out there that can sew. So, um, you know, I looked up on YouTube model ship sail making, and you just don't see it. I, I, I you know, I don't have all day to sit around and, and hunt for this kind of stuff. But you know, something like that should pop up right away if it was out there. And there's just really nobody showing you. How to sew a sail and how to, how and really the process you got to go through. Now I am going to put a link below to and I mentioned this fellow before. He, he's from over in the Mediterranean somewhere. He goes by the name of Chef Am, Ambrose, I believe it is. And uh, most of his videos he plays. Believe it or not, he is a chef, but he's also plays the harmonica and. He says in some of his videos he's built 94 ships. And let me tell you, he's got a few videos up there on his ships, and they are something. They are works of art. But he's the one where I got the idea of transferring my pattern to tissue, and then he takes his to a seamstress. Uh, he's also got a video up there on how he does his rat lines. He does his rat lines and his shrouds off of the ship. So he's got a couple good videos up there. So if you want to see, you know, what I'm talking about, go over to his site. I'll put a link below. But anyway, getting back to my ship. Uh, I spent uh, I spent the better part of two days, almost three days, just practicing how to sew a straight line. And getting, there's so many things you got to know about the sewing machine. It, it's you got to know the tension on the string. You got to know the width of the stitch. Uh, uh, there was something else. The um, oh, I can't remember. It just it, you know, it's there's a lot to learn about a sewing machine. So I spent the better part of two, almost three days, just getting to know the sewing machine. And I've got two good sewing machines to choose from. And uh, just trying to sew a straight stitch. And I'll show you some of the mistakes I made. <laughs> and this is probably why, like I said, you don't see a lot of videos on this. Now, I have seen videos, and I got a comment from Frankie Day, how a lot of guys use that tacky glue. And I used that on my bounty. I did, I did do that. Uh, but, I'm, you know, I want those seams down down the ship let me show you here this right here this is my main sail and you can see I got all these lines drawn in there this is my paper uh, template so I want a stitch on all those lines drawn I want a nice long stitch down there so that's that's a challenge right there, trying to sew a straight line. One thing I learned is that sewing machine, man, it'll take off on you. It'll, it, it'll sew right now. It'll, it'll just go right through fabric. But what I found out, the slower, the better. 
Just take your time with a sewing machine. Go nice and slow. Now, granted, uh, a lot of guys probably won't do this. They'll turn it over to their wives or the one thought that I had going to a seamstress, laying it all out, taking it to a seamstress. But like I said, I'm going to challenge this. It's a challenge to me and I'm going to do it. I'm going to, I'm going to get this done. Now, I'm probably going to get some comments from guys and I've got these before. Well, I've been doing, I've been building model ships for 20, 30 years and I, you know what? Then post some videos for us. You know, put something up there that other guys can see. Don't get on my comment section and brag about what you've done and what you can do and then don't show nobody you know and I, and I don't know if these guys are trolls looking to get me excited or what but you know until you post something on there I I, I don't buy it so I'm gonna try in the next couple videos show you what I've been up to uh, there's not a whole lot going on in this one. I did get, like I said, one sale done, one of the jib sales done, but I'm not happy with it, and I will redo it. Uh, and we'll talk a little bit more about some of the things I don't like about making these sales, but it is it is what it is, and it's what you got to do. So let me get the camera turned around. Enough talking about this, and uh, show you what I got on the desk. Uh, I'm doing all this sewing in the other room at the dining room table and believe me it takes up the whole dining room table and I thought I had a pile of waist string from doing my rigging and stuff you ought to seen the pile of waist string I had from trying to sew you know but them little spools of thread they don't cost that much you know so if you're gonna do this buy a few of them <laughs> alright so um, let me get the camera turned around and show you, show you what I've been up to. Okay, so here I am back at the desk. And uh, I believe we're into another first for YouTube. Now, like I said, it may be out there. I didn't have the time or the will or the energy to sit there and spend days going through videos to see if someone has showed how to make a model sale, model ship sale. So uh, this may be one of the first. All right. So the first thing you got to decide is on your material. What type of material do you want to use? Now this here is the material that came with the model. Okay. And the thing I didn't like about this is the color of it. It's you can see it's a it's a brownish shade to it, and I, and I didn't care for that. So uh, I I had some material that I used on the bounty, and what I did with the bounty is I took a piece of white material and soaked it into tea to get this color. And I got come here, come here. I got a little Frello here who wants to say hello. And if you go back to, I think, video number 11, you will see this guy <laughs> when he was a little puppy. Come on, here, you got to get in view. Let me back out a little bit. You got to get in view of the camera. I had him on video 11 months ago when he was a little puppy. Now he's in here pestering me when I'm trying to make a video, ain't you? Huh? little ragamuffin is what I call him. All right, I'm on. All right, so let me reset the camera again. I'm going the wrong way. All right, so the first thing you got to decide is material. All right, so here's this white material I had when I did the bounty. And like I said, you know, you can get on there, and, and, and especially that link I got below, he shows you how to, you put it in boiling tea, and you can get this color, all right? So I'm going with this white. That's what I decided on. And you see the difference in the two colors. Okay? Because 
most of your sailing ships of this type, I believe, my own personal opinion, every one I've ever seen, the sails are white. And that's what I want. I want that white, white color. All right. Now, if I ever do another ship, an old square rigger, I will probably use this stuff because this is pretty nice material. It's got a nice pattern to it. All right. So, here's my patterns. This is my paper pattern. And you can see I drew all them lines on it where they stitch. This is to replicate the stitching together of two pieces of material. Because your canvas, I've heard everything from your canvas or material, whatever it is, would come anywhere from two foot to three foot wide. I've heard more closer to two foot, I'm not sure. But that's what that replicates. So there's my pattern. All right. Then I told you I was going to transfer this over to tissue paper and then just sew that tissue paper right to that pattern. So here's, here's this tissue paper I bought. Well, I didn't buy it. Dwight got it for me. It's just uh, tissue paper that you get when you buy a, a new shirt and it comes wrapped up in a box and it's got this tissue paper around it. You know, uh, you can get it probably at any kind of uh, department store. You probably go in just ask them for a couple extra pieces of tissue paper. But that's what you find when you open your Christmas present and you got a new sweater or something. They, they'll put that all around it. Okay. So I took a piece of that and laid it on top of here and drew out my, my pattern on the tissue paper. Okay. So I wound up with that. Now what I done was I gave an extra half inch all the way around and that's going to be for my hem. All right. So you can see that the tissue paper pattern is a half inch larger than the actual pattern itself. Because in the material when it comes time, you'll be folding this over. All right. So I got that far. And then I actually took one of the smaller jib sails and and I did that. Let me see if I can find one here. I got all this stuff laying in here. And I and I threw it away because, you know, but I got all this stuff laying here and it's falling on me. Give me a, give me a second. Okay. So I actually um I did that. I took a, <clears throat> a piece of the tissue paper that I had drawn out of this jib sail and I laid it on a piece of material and I was practicing with my straight lines. And actually it works out pretty good. But when I got done, I sat there and then I had to peel off that tissue paper. And let me tell you, it, it was a pain in the ass. You know, if you can imagine sewing through this and then this is on your material when you're done. This is sewed onto your material and then you got to pull this paper off. <laughs> it's, believe me, it was a pain in the ass because it would just come off in little pieces and you're there for uh, an hour trying to pick all this paper off. So then what I decided to do was take the material and uh, lay my pattern on it and I just took a pencil, just took a, a, a regular pencil, and I didn't draw a real heavy line, but I drew it, a line with my pencil enough that I could see it and got my pattern, okay? And then I made another line for the extra half inch, and then I marked off where all these were and got all these lines. So I drew the pattern on my material with a pencil. I thought, I don't know what this is going to turn out like if it's going to show up. Well, the thing about the pencil is you can make a line on here and you can come along with your um, eraser if you had a good eraser. Let me get one here. I got a good eraser. Hold on. 
and you can come along. Now that was a pretty heavy line I drew there. But if you have to, you can get that out of there. Now that one didn't come out 100%, but I had a different pencil I was using too. But you just draw a light line, and if you sew good and straight, you'll sew through that line and you won't see it at all anyway. So that's what I did. I, I went to the pencil method, all right? Now here's what I came up with, and that's this cell right here. Right there it is. Okay. Uh, the hardest part of making this sale was the hem. And that's why I say I got to practice on this hem. Um, the bottom of it has got two lines in the hem. They came out pretty decent. This side has got one line. It came out pretty decent. This side has got two lines. It, it, it's junk. And another thing is, I started on a point, I had my sewing needle right here, and I started on this point, well that's a no-no, because -no, that point drives that material down inside your machine, so you've got to start somewhere wide, you got to start on a, on a wide spot and go to the point. Okay, so here's my first sale, and like I said, I won't be using this. And uh, I, I'm just not, you know, I don't know what you can do about it. But it looks good from this side. It looks pretty nice. You turn it over and you see this, this big old hemline here. So that's what i got to work on. I've got to try and get this down a little bit narrower. Okay. And I was doing the ironing method. I was folding it over to where it needed to be, ironing it, folding it again, ironing it again, and then sewing it. So, I mean, I don't want to get into a sewing lesson thing here. It's, it's all kinds of stuff. You're going to have to pick it up and learn it on yourself. But I've got some things on this I'm not happy with. And I've got other things I am happy with. I am happy with all my straight lines. Got them nice. So, it, it's, it's going to take probably two or three of these messing around trying to figure this out to get this right. Now, here's another thing I did. Uh, all these stitch lines, the, the uh, thread that I used is a, is a darker thread than the material because I kind of wanted them to stand out and I didn't want them to get lost in the white material so I didn't use white thread on white material. So here's my white material and here's the tan color that I went with. You can see there's a little bit of a shade there uh, in the difference. And I actually, when I bought this, I thought that was pretty drastic. But when you see it on the material itself, it's not that bad. It's just what I wanted. A little bit of a contrast between the stitching thread and the sail itself. So it worked out pretty nice. Now... Let's talk about something else here. I've looked at a lot of pictures. <clears throat> and in the old days, on the old square rig sailing ships, they would put a, I don't know what it's called, a, a rope around the edge. Hold on a second. I've got the book here. It might be in there. Okay. Um, this is making a set of sails that's in the directions, all right? Uh, I thought they had a, a name for it. I'm sure they got a name for it, but it's not on here. But there's a, uh, more like a rope here. Let's see if it shows up right there. It goes around your sail, all the way around the edge of the sail, all right? And uh, let me do it this way. Let me lay this on here. And that would be a, a, a rope that goes all the way around the outside edge. And then in, in, in their instance, they're putting the loop in it and then coming around. Going, it, it follows the whole outside edge of this sail. The pictures that I saw, 
and they're very very clear on the blue nose too is on the bottom there is not that there that rope does not exist it looks like this a hem and they just got little eye rings in there little rings in the sail that they tie off to the boom I cannot get a clear picture anywhere but it does look like they got that rope on this edge and on this edge but it's definitely not on the bottom you can get some very clear shots of that on the blue nose too so I'm going to eliminate that altogether I'm going to eliminate that little rope that goes all the way around and another thing um, I thought about making this sail without a hem I thought about trying to do this without a hem and taking that tacky glue they call it I believe for material and put that along the edge to keep it from you know fraying keep it from coming apart like that the only problem I've seen with that is when I go to put my rings in here that are on the uh, the uh, rigging and I go to attach them rings here there's no strength in this material and I'm afraid them rings would rip out that material so I'm gonna have to have a hem I have to have that strength around the edge of this sail I just gotta get this thing smaller if I can a little bit smaller so it doesn't look so bad from this side because when you do this you're gonna have one good side to display and the other side is going to look like that. Alright, let me show you a couple, uh, couple of my samples when I was experimenting, starting out with this stuff. <laughs> and when I first started, I got the, the first machine I got out, I ran a straight stitch, just you know, running it through the machine, and I thought, wow. This looks pretty easy. Look at that. That looks nice. You know? And then I started messing with it and doing some more. And then I wound up with stuff like this. You know? So this is, well, like I said, where you have to learn about sewing machines. Where your tension comes into play. And the width of the stitch comes into play. And, and all that kind of stuff. So, you're going to have to, uh, if you never sewed before, and your wife had to get her to give you a lesson in it because a lot of this stuff is important to get a good stitch but like I said the very first one I done right there that was the very first one I done. it came out great I thought wow man I got it made yeah right so and that's what I did I just kept taking material and, and running lines and running lines I had a couple of these pieces in here. I don't have them no more. But I just, you know, practiced and practiced. Spent a day and a half just doing stitches and seeing the problems I was running into. You know, and, and you're going to run into problems if you've never done it before. Needle has to be in the right position The uh, when you're done so you can pull back. and it, it just, it's a, it's a, a series of videos in itself all right so I believe what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna niche this idea this uh, tissue paper I don't think I'm gonna do this because like I said it's a nice idea you just lay this on your material and follow your lines but then you got to sit there and pick all this off so it turned out being much easier just drawing pencil lines on there. Now, them pencil lines are on there. I can't see them. They're buried by that thread. I do not see one pencil line on this material. So, I believe that's what I'll do. I'll take my pencil and draw out my pattern on the material and just go at it. I just got to get my hemline uh, figured out. And here's another thing that they don't tell you. Now, it don't look too bad, but
but you got to realize this hem is folded over there's three layers of material there by the time you get done folded three layers now you got three layers here three layers here now you got six layers here <coughs> but it's not too bad you know it looks pretty good now another thing and uh, this is going to be a little challenge in itself let me see if I can get one of these up here these little rings I'm going to put these little rings on each corner where they get tied off at alright so I've got to come up with a way to get this ring sewed on here I thought about and I haven't done this yet so it's not once again it's a trial and error but I thought about snipping off a, just a little portion of this material bringing that ring up to here and then just hand sewing that ring on there and I believe that's what I'll probably do so that way I got my ring on there to tie off into the different positions that it goes alright so we you know I figured this was going to take me a couple weeks uh, you know if it wasn't for these sales I could have the ship done tomorrow you know just finish up the rigging and, and things like that but you know the wife wants the sales I, I'm going to try it I, I got to get this done sooner or later because sooner or later I'm going to be building the ship that needs sails. So I might as well do it here. And here's another thing for you. Alright, let's say you don't want to display your sails uh, on the ship. You want them furled, what they call furled, where they're bunched up like this onto the uh, different booms. Uh, one thing I did learn about that method is and I don't remember you'd have to look it up again on some of them websites but I believe you remove close to one-fourth of your material I think that's in the book here yeah if you want to furrow your sails it's close to one-fourth of the material you cut off so if I was going to you know roll these sails up on the on the booms I would be cutting it about right here and and just having this much because that's too much material bunched up on that boom so keep that in mind if you're going to furrow your sails all right so and let me show you one more thing and then i think we'll call it call it quits i got my go juice here my orange juice yes it's regular orange juice I'm saving this one for last <laughs> you can see why but I also have to get these lines in here where them reef lines go okay so I gotta get these stitched in here on this sail and the other and one other sail and then I have to put all them reef lines on on there <clears throat> so there's a lot to this it's a challenge and you know like I said you know uh, I really I, I, you know I don't know how many guys actually do this themselves uh, you know it, it, it's real tempting to take this over to that seamstress and say here's my pattern this is what I want go for it I don't know it, it, and then it might be a waste of money you might get them all back and 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 they're just enough off that you just you know so I'm just gonna go ahead and tackle this see what happens if worse comes to worse that's what I'll do I'll take this patterns and uh, run them over to her and let her I'm, I'm gonna find a different seamstress though someone that speaks pretty good English can understand what I'm talking about but that's a you know that's a choice you'll have to make all right and maybe you can get lucky enough you got a, a wife that wants to get involved in this <laughs> my wife does does not want to get involved in this because she knows how i am if it doesn't come out perfect you know she doesn't want to listen to me uh let me say one more thing here before i i uh finish this video for the week 
<clears throat> uh, I know from watching videos of sewing and, and reading some stuff, uh, there is what they call a foot, a pressure foot that's on a sewing machine. They make one for this sewing machine that uh, will take this hem and all you got to do is get it started and it's a special little foot and it will fold this over for you as you sew along. So yeah, I know there's a, a foot out there I could get to sew a hem. But what I was doing, like I said, I would fold this over, give it an iron, fold it again, give it another iron, and then I was taking my Tamiya tape, right here, I was taking a piece of Tamiya tape and laying it down on the edge of my hem, okay, and you can sew right through that. And I was putting that tape all along here in different areas, you know, every couple inches and you can just sew right through that if you want but that helps hold that down while you're sewing and then when you're done like I said you just come along and you peel it off and if you sew through it you know it, you might have to pick at it a little bit with a pair of tweezers or something but I do know that there is things out there to make this uh, they say a little easier. I don't know about that. I'm not going to go ahead. And they're only about eight, eight or nine bucks for one of them pressure foots. But uh, I found this worked just as good. And I also know that that tacky glue is out there. I could use that. Uh, I have seen guys use super glue. Let me tell you something. Before you do anything, experiment, practice. Uh, Steve Prisky uh, on his website on YouTube. He's got some YouTube. He shows you how he uses super glue to attach that rope along the outside edge. I don't know, you know, I tried super glue. It, it kind of screws up the material. You have to be real, real careful with that super glue on material. The uh, tacky stuff that they make for sewing it's not as bad it doesn't show up but that super glue if you hold it up to a light it shows up bigger than hell so uh, experiment practice on stuff before you do anything because I know there's going to be some guys out there that say well I never had this kind of trouble well good you know like I said at the beginning of this video post something for us so there she is that's it for this one